In this video, I review the Hammerhead Karoo 2, which is a bike computer and a very good one. I bought the Karoo 2 way back in August 2021, but only managed to get it out of its box in August 22 due to insert unsatisfactory excuse here. I'm glad I did though. Over the last three months, I've grown to rather like it. Now it's not a super new device. The original clunky looking Karoo was launched in 2017 with the more svelte Karoo 2 following in the second half of 2020. I'll save you too much of the spiel. Basically, it's a high-end touchscreen bike GPS built on the Android operating system rather than a bespoke hammerhead one. And as it turns out, it's a very viable alternative to Garmin and Wahoo at the top of the bike computer market. The basics. In no particular order, the Karoo 2 uses the magic of satellites to track and record your bike rides. It connects to Ant Plus and Bluetooth sensors to display and record session data. It links to and controls your smart trainer. It whispers sweet Bluetooth notifications to your smartphone, and it has full on board navigation. And before you start worrying the missing feature, syncing ride data with your smartphone via Bluetooth is sort of redundant. I'll come on to that later in the video. The Karoo 2 is built on capable hardware. There's no lag when moving around the device. It might not be iPhone quick, but it feels zippy enough as a bike computer. Hammerhead continues to develop the software operating system, releasing updates and new features every couple of weeks, which is of course wunderbar. This Karoo 2 firmware refresh thingamy seems to get called out a lot in much more reputable media establishments than this one and it's undoubtedly a good thing. But Garmin and Wahoo also update firmware on a fairly regular basis, so I'm not sure it's the differentiating factor that people seem to think it is. That said, one of those software updates brought the climber feature, which is a differentiating factor and I'm a massive fan, so let's sink our teeth into the meat of the review there. Climber feature. My hands down favorite thing on the Hammerhead Karoo 2 is the climber feature all caps. As a cyclist, if there's anything weaker than my 43-year-old legs, it's my 43-year-old mental resolve. On longer and harder rides, I struggle not knowing how much distance is left or how many meters of total ascent are left to accrue. The same applies to individual climbs. I feel a lot happier if I know where a climb steepens, where it flattens to offer respite, and whether there's another vicious ramp around the next bend. So the elevation screen is very much my friend on a tough ride, superseded more recently by Climb Pro from Garmin and the Wahoo Summit feature. For me, the climber feature on the Karoo 2 is better than both of them because, crucially, it works even when you're not following a predefined route. Using Mistafarius software whiz bangery, presumably the gradient data built into the map file, the Karoo 2 will work out if you're heading towards a substantial climb and then present you with a screen of useful data to quieten the mental monkey. The format of the screen is colorful and clear and I like it. The climb is divided into 500 meter chunks, each of which is color coded by gradient. Dark green is easier, getting steeper as you move through yellow, orange, and red. Thankfully, I've not yet hit purple. The horizontal grid underneath, again color-coded, shows the gradient over the next few hundred meter increments. So you get the full extent of the climb on the chart, important for my long-term mental state, and then more granular data in the grid. Now apparently accuracy can be an issue at the 100 meter level. At this scale, the number shown can be distorted by incorrect spikes in the underlying mapping data. I've generally found it okay, but then I've not been using the Karoo 2 in mountainous terrain with switchback bends where the issue is more pronounced. Either way, I like the climber screen itself. It does a good job of cooling my worry jets. And I particularly like that it pops up with an upcoming climb on any ride, not just those where I'm following an uploaded route. Maybe the Garmin elves are beavering and the Wahoo beavers are elving to reproduce a similar feature. But for now, and assuming Hammerhead continues to work on the gradient data issue, Climber is, for me, a very good reason for selecting the Karoo 2 over its rivals. Looks size and all that fandango. I was expecting the Karoo 2 to be chunky, bordering on ugly. In reality, it's neither. 
Whilst it's hardly a small bike computer, and it doesn't have any aero pretensions, it looks sufficiently smart and modern in the out front mount. It's a bit bigger than my Edge 830, sort of similar to my Wahoo Element Roam, the original one, and a bit smaller than my Edge 1030 Plus. Not too big, not too small, like the porridge. The mount fitting on the back is Hammerhead's own design. You sort of slide the Karoo onto the mount and it clicks into place. Slight twist and slide off to remove. Well, that's the theory. It feels very secure in the mount. Very secure, but I struggle a bit with getting it out. Actually, I struggle with it a lot. It's a pain. I find the Garmin system a lot easier. I guess nine years of experience does that to you. The Karoo 2 does come with an adapter if it all gets too much, or if you have a precious family heirloom Garmin handlebar mount that you simply can't give up. But who cares about handlebar mounts? The Karoo 2 is a nice looking unit. It looks smart and very much the part when it's attached to my bike. And if you find yourself gazing at the hammerhead for any period of time, it won't be the case that draws the eye. It will be the beautiful display. So screen! The Karoo 2 comes with a glorious vibrant matte display which according to the specs is made from Gorilla Glass. I'd have guessed Unicorn Piss. It's bright, it's colourful, it's high definition. I likes it very much. Now if you've seen my Element Bolt V1 versus V2 comparison video, you'll know I really like the screen on the newer version of the Bolt. I-M-H-O, the display on the Karoo 2 is even better. It's certainly less reflective in bright sunlight than the Edge 830 and the 1030 Plus and clearer to read whilst riding. Here are some of my amateurish shots that probably don't do the Karoo justice. Now the Karoo isn't just a pretty face, it's a touchy face. Mm. I'd describe the touchscreen as adequate, which isn't meant to be a euphemism for bad. We've perhaps been spoilt by highly responsive smartphones and tablets when it comes to finger on screen action. The Karoo 2 touchscreen is an iPhone fast, but it's reasonable for a bike computer that has to put up with regular road soakings. It's certainly on a par with touchscreen Garmin edges from whence the competitionary pressures arise. User interface. Whether we're talking the touchscreen Edge 830 or the button reliant Edge 530, the majority of the functions and settings on higher-end Garmin's are controlled and are set on the device itself. Wahoo Elements don't currently have touchscreens, so they rely on physical buttons, mainly those on the front, with a smartphone app doing a lot of the heavy lifting from a settings perspective. The Karoo 2 offers a blended path, both in terms of the user interface, how features are organized and presented on the bike computer, and the controls. The Karoo 2 has both a touchscreen and four physical buttons on the side of the device, with certain core functions, such as scrolling through the ride data screens, controlled by either method. Hammerhead doesn't mirror Garmin's approach of menu after menu. It's much more like a smartphone interface with intuitively designed screen elements and copious amounts of finger swiping. To my eyes and stunted digits, it's attractive and pleasing to use. Nor does it rely big Wahoo style on an app because, get this folks, aside from a basic Android one for mirroring phone notifications, there isn't an app. WTAF, who designs a bike computer without an app? But hold on, young grasshopper, let's actualize together and achieve clarity. The Android-based UI is the app and the Karoo 2 is the smartphone. You can even put a SIM card in it. <laughs> Anyway, I very like the Karoo's user interface. For the headline features like Climber and the integration with Strava Live segments, the screens are daubed with eye-slapping splashes of colour. To this preschool art critic, they look the business. The screens are intuitively laid out. Where needed, Hammerhead adds subtle text descriptions to make clear what an option or a screen is there for. Once you've got the hang of them, changing the settings on a ride profile, such as adding a data page or field is straightforward. You can tweak, preferably not twerk, to your heart's content. Maps and navigation. Navigation 
it's what you need. Navigation is another Karoo 2 strength, certainly for roadverts like me. Maps are colourful with plenty of detail, but not too busy that they become difficult to follow. There's loads of space on the device, 32 giga crackers, in which to download maps for when you're off the grid. Playing around with the map whilst on a ride, zooming in and out, squiggling around is responsive with little noticeable lag. For choice, the icon that unlocks the view allowing you to scroll around is slightly easier to hit on Garmin, mainly because it uses an ugly great hand icon. The Karoo's more subtle lock icon can require a few fat finger thrusts before the ferret is fettled. Getting routes onto the Karoo 2 is a piece of picnic. You can create them on the device or via the Hammerhead website. With a linked Strava account, any routes you create and favourite will automatically appear on the Karoo 2. For ride with GPS, again, after linking accounts, you just copy the route URL into this box and it magically appears in your dashboard and on the Karoo. You can even copy in random Google Maps routes and it still works. It's not clear why this function fills my loins with such warmth. A quick word on Bluetooth and 4G. Bear with me. This is the missing feature I mentioned up top. The Karoo 2 uses Bluetooth to communicate with Bluetooth sensors secreted about your bike and your person. It also uses it to flash up texts, emails and new TikTok dance notifications on the Karoo screen. What the Karoo doesn't do, as far as I can tell, is use Bluetooth to sync with your phone. When you finish a ride, it won't send the file to your iPhone and thence on into the Ether or Strava. In the other direction, your phone isn't sending root files to the Karoo 2. This is because, and young man or woman, we've talked about this, your Karoo 2 is your phone. To do said syncing, actually to your Hammerhead account, which contains all your ride and route data, the Karoo 2 needs to connect to the information highway matrix web via Wi-Fi or using the SIM card that you've inserted into its rear passage. If you're using a SIM, you can also enable live tracking natively on the Karoo 2, rather than relying on a phone and its battery like the Wahoos and Garmin's. If you're going sans SIM, you can always connect the Karoo to your phone's Wi-Fi hotspot for on-the-move route transfers and uploads or just wait until you get back to a Wi-Fi enabled base. There may be the odd use case where the Karoo struggles with something a competitor can do, but these feel few and far between. So I'm fine with the hammerhead approach. Your kilometerage may of course vary. Battery life. If a device can go a few rides between charges with a few, being very loosely defined, then it's good enough for me. I struggle to find the topic of battery life interesting. Then I get grief, albeit from a subset of voltage ticklers, for not engaging with the subject. So I did a science, a steaming great math science on your YouTube doormat. What I did. In my two test periods, each one starting with a fully charged battery, I used the Karoo 2 for rides of varying lengths and recorded the battery level over time. Or rather the Karoo did in each fit file and I downloaded and analyzed them. I didn't do anything special to use up or eke out battery life. I just used the Karoo without thinking. My standard protocol for life. What I found out. Long story short, in test period one, over five hours of riding, battery level reduced from 98 to 37%, a drop of 61 percentage points. Scaling that up implies a fully charged Karoo 2 should give just over eight hours of riding. Test two was similar, giving an implied 8.5 hours of real world battery life. Here endeth my doctoral thesis. Eight hours is more than enough for my day-to-day -day velo with the occasional ride at the weekend, but my bum would begin to squeak high-pitched and siren-like if I was looking at a tough hundred miler or a big day in the mountains. There's not much margin for error. There is a battery saving mode, which I assume gets you closer to the upper end of the seven to 14 hour battery life range that Hammerhead states for the Karoo 2. But be aware that in normal mode, it'll require more frequent charges than competing Garmin and Wahoo bike computers. Charging. Whilst we're talking milliamp hours, 
Rogers, my specialist subject, a very brief word on charging. The Karoo 2 has a USB-C charging port, which appears to be the minimum requirement these days. Even Garmin is starting to get rid of the old fashioned slow to charge micro USB power sphincter. Less good is the detachable charging port cover and I mean fully detachable. Without the usual rubber banjo string keep attached thingamy, yours will inevitably get lost, as mine has. Hammerhead says the port is waterproof, so once again, I'm probably wittering on about inconsequentialities. Is the Hammerhead Karoo 2 a good bike computer? You've probably guessed the answer, which is yes. I very much enjoyed using the Karoo 2. I'm slightly confused why it took me so long to get it out of the box. Having read earlier reviews, I was expecting issues with stability, features randomly not working, sensors dropping out. I've had none of this. Performance is as consistent as my Swiss clockwork bowels. The Karoo 2 has everything I need from a bike computer with a fantastic screen and a very usable software interface. As I think I've gushed enough, I love the automatic climber feature. A quick note of caution though, if you're a posho with high-end Shimano electronic gear wizardry, you should be aware that the Karoo 2 doesn't have the usual DI to integrations. It used to, but then SRAM bought Hammerhead, smoky decisions were made in knee-jerk rooms, and now it doesn't. So only buy the Karoo 2 if you can live with not seeing what gear you're in at all times. But with that disclaimer disclaimed, if you're in the market for a premium bike computer with a display to tickle your eye buds, you're not in a monogamous relationship with Garmin or Wahoo, and you don't want another bloody app on your smartphone, harumph, then the Karoo 2 might be the handlebar dangler for you. On guard! <laughs> Dickhead.